Hello. Today I'm going to talk about logic gates, and also how to simplify circuits that are made with logic gates. Your first question might be exactly what is a logic gate? Well, think about computers and uh, digital stuff. Have you ever wondered exactly how computers work? How do you think electricity or, or button input uh, results in a picture or a color to appear to the screen? Uh, well, that's kind of complicated, but uh, at, at the uh, core, it's really logic gates that help make that happen. Uh, they are considered to be basic building bl blocks for di digital circuits. Logic gates are gates that take in one or more el electrical signals from a circuit, then sends an output signal based on that input. The way these gates are placed can determine how data is physically processed inside the computer and what uh, comes outside the, c the computer, as in to the screen. Uh, there are some basic uh, logic gates that everyone should know about, and that's what we will talk about. Here's a list of the basic gates. They are called AND, OR, NOT, NAND, NOR, XOR, and XNOR. Uh, each gate has a unique truth t table to it, and al also a unique uh, picture symbolizes what the gate looks like. The truth table will have values 1s and zeros. 1 means that it's true or turned on, 0 means it's false or turned off. Okay, this is an AND gate. Uh, as you can see from the table, it is only true when both A and B as input are turned on. Otherwise, it's turned off. OR. Now you can see if A or B is true, then uh, the output will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. If A and B are both true, then that still counts as being true. NOT. Uh, if A is uh, zero or false, then A will be true. Otherwise, it, it will be false. You can see that it's the opposite of A, whatever A, A happens to be. Also notice this only takes in one input, so whatever B is in this case, it doesn't really matter. NAND. Uh, NAND is the exact opposite of AND. It's, you can think of it as having an AND gate and a NOT gate combined. Uh, so it's one if it's a zero if A and B are both true, otherwise it's one. NOR. Uh, NOR is the op opposite of uh, OR in the same way that it was n n NAND was the opposite of n AND. So it's true only if A and B are zero but if A or B is equal to 1, then it will be false. XOR. Uh, XOR has a special symbol, uh, uh, the plus with a circle around it, as you can see here. And uh, it is, some people call it exclusive OR, uh, because you can think of it as it's true only if one of the values is true. So if A is true, then it's true. If B is true, true then it's true. But if a, a and B is true, then it's not. So basically, if A and B are different values, then it's true. XNOR is the opposite of XOR. So it's going to be true only if A and B are equal to each other, whether or not they both equal 0 or 1. Okay, those are all the logic gates. Uh, I hope you memorized all that. Uh, to be able to continue further, you should memorize uh, what the tables uh, stand for. Uh, R for each gate and also what the p picture uh, of each gate looks like. Uh, also, I interesting to fact, uh, did you know that all of these gates that we just saw could be created with just NAND gates or just NOR gates? Yeah, it's true. And this is useful for uh, factories or uh, companies to know when they are making these circuits themselves because th technically they could make every cir everything with just one or two different gates instead of having to make several different types. It's probably cheaper for them. Okay, now that we know what the uh, uh, gates stand for and what they do, we can combine them to create a circuit. And then if we have a circuit in front of us and we know uh, what each uh, gate in the circuit stands for, we could probably determine what the output is. Here's an example. Okay, so we have what looks like a somewhat complicated uh, circuit. It's not that complicated. Uh, and we have input. A is equal to 1, and B is equal to 1. C is equal to 0, and C is equal to 0, D is equal to 1. Uh, what would the output be? Well, we can go at one at a time. 
The first gate here is an AND gate. So if A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1, then the two input are 1 and 1. Therefore, the output would also be 1. Uh, there's another gate here uh, that's uh, the XOR gate, where B is 1, C is 0. So if you put those as the input, then 1 would be the output. Output 1. So therefore, the output is 1. Uh, th these are usually simple to follow, as long as you follow them carefully. Uh, just make sure you don't make a mistake somewhere. And you have to be careful if you were making a gate yourself. Uh, or if you happen to see this as an example, you can t say why it's wrong. Think about this. Uh, what would this produce if you were to run, run it as a real circuit? Put something. So every input to the gate must be uh, cal calculated before the output. And you can see the AND gate here. One of the input can't be done unless the output is already given to it. So that uh, creates a contradiction, so it can't be run. Also, uh, notice if you, if, let's suppose this was able to run, uh, you would have a problem. You would get a contradiction val uh, values as you continued through uh, with it. Okay, anyway, so now that we know what gates are and we know what a circuit looks like, we know how to uh, say what the output of a circuit is, suppose we wanted to design our own circuit ourselves based on output that we kn knew we wanted. Let's try that. Here's an example. This is the table of uh, three input and one output. So let's think about that. How would we write that as a uh, circuit? Well, the output is going to equal one only at certain points there. So you could write an expression to say that the output will be true only if A is false, B is true, and C is false. Or if A is false, B is true, and C is true or and so on. Now if you were to continue that for all the values where the output is 1, you would get this expression. And if you were to draw that uh, circuit, uh, this is more or less what it would look like. I apologize, it's a little messy. This is probably a bad way to make circuits. This is why we simplify circuits first. If we can, we should always simplify the circuit before we actually make it. If we do, then the final circuit that we have will use le less logic gates, which is cheaper to make in real life, and it's also easier for us to follow by looking at it. Now let's look back at the previous previous example. This is the expression we had. How can we simplify that? Well, if you, if you think of it as math, uh, we could simplify it by factoring. Uh, if we factor out, if for example, the two va first terms have uh, not a as a common thing, so we can factor that out. And the last three terms there have uh, a as a common uh, thing, so we could factor that out. Now if you look here, we have a not c and c, or sorry, not c or c, we, and here we have not b and, or b. Now if you think of Boolean logic, if you have a variable or the opposite of it, what would that term output to you? Well, it would output true, always. And now based on that, you, uh, if you have something and something and true, well, it doesn't really matter what uh, the output is. Uh, true will be irrelevant to what the output is. So you can get rid of the true. And therefore you would get this final expression. And that's about as simplified as we can get make this right now. So what we did, did was using uh, simple uh, factoring out with math and Boolean logic. But this doesn't always guarantee that it will give you the smallest possible circuit expression that you can have. It is also easy to make mistakes if you have several input variables. So there's another method that uses something called a Carnot map, which we're going to call k-maps because that's difficult to pronounce. And we're going to use those now to see how we can get e even smaller expression. Okay, make if you have a map with only one input, then you would make it like this. You would have uh, one row and uh, two columns to, to stand for each uh, possible va value. If you have two input, then you would uh, add a row to the bottom. So you would have two, uh, one uh, variable on the top and one variable on the side. Uh, if you have three input, then you have to put that third input somewhere. So you put that on the top, and you would combine that with uh, the other input on the top. So, and uh, on the, if you have four, then you would have two input on the top and two on the side. Now notice that this map is two-dimensional, so as you put the, the different the values on, on the top or the side, you combine them 
uh, to make your different columns and rows. Also notice that each column and row differs by one visually. Uh, for example, here you, on the top here you have 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, then 1, 0. Uh, that's a different order from what you're probably used to, but uh, this way you can see that uh, each uh, column differs only by one, which is necessary for what we are about to do. Okay, so this is the previous example, and this is the K map that would correspond to it. Okay, now that we have to actually calculate the function bit with the map, what you do is, well, well we're going to first use the sum of products. This means that we want to combine all the values that have 1 as the value. So what you do is you find every, all the 1's and you combine them in either groups of 1, 2, or 4, or, or 8, or so on, to make squares or rectangles. So what I mean is it, anything 2 to the power of something, that's how many you have to combine at, at once. We want to use as few groups as possible. And we also want to combine, we could also combine edges, as in the side edges here can com, uh, circulate to the other side and combine with those. And when we're done, we're going to look at each group that we have and uh, combine them to make our function. So you see here, the first group we have makes a perfect square uh, with four, four uh, and uh, we have another input here that uh, takes the sides and uh, makes a uh, rectangle of two. So if we uh, make the function based on that, uh, we, we look at the common values that exist here in this red square. Uh, what we have is b. b is true for all of it, and c changes through it, so it doesn't really matter what c is. And a also changes in it, so it doesn't matter what a is. Therefore, we only care about b. And therefore, it's b. Now, for the orange one, uh, a is w 1 all the time, and c is 0 all the time, and b changes, so we don't care what b is. So we have a and not c, and that's one possible function. Now we're going to do it again. There's another method called the POS, called the product of sums. So we do something similar, but we now look at all the values that have 0 instead of 1. Otherwise, it's very similar. So again, we have uh, two different uh, rectangles here, or squares, groups. Now how we make the function based on that, be these are zeros. We, we want a function that tells us what the 1 would, uh, how we would get 1. So we kind of have to do the opposite here. We would, uh, for the first one here, uh, notice that b is 0 and c is uh, always 1, and a always changes, so it doesn't matter what a is. So uh, what we would do is we would take the opposite of what we just uh, have there. So b is 0, well, we would say, okay, if b is 1, or if c is 0, then this, then we would get 1. Otherwise, we would get 0. So we put that. And again, we do it with this other one here. So 0, 0, 0 for a, b, and c, we would say the opposite. We would say uh, positive a, or b, or c. And that would be our function. Okay, we have a lot of different functions now. Are they all right? Well, you can check for yourself with a truth table. Uh, we have the original output as we wanted here, and we have the four new functions on the side here. And yes, if you uh, did, did all of these, then you would see all of them are correct. So they are all valid uh, to make a circuit uh, the way we want. Now compare uh, that with the previous circuit we first made. It looked like this big complicated thing, but compare that with the simplest function that we found. That looks a lot simpler, doesn't it? And we're done now. Yeah, so you just learned the basics of logic gates and uh, how to simplify uh, uh, circuits. And you should keep practicing. These problems might look simple now that you've seen it, but they do get complicated and the more you practice with it, the easier it'll be for you. And uh, there are more uh, topics to understand about uh, circuits uh, that besides just logic gates, uh, and you, but you'll have to uh, study more on, that, on your own to find out about that. So thanks for watching.